We on the streets in the war zones Pushing this truth until we get called home I got brothers I can fall on Any situation brothers I can call on All we gotta do is log on Send a chain message seeing if the God's home A brother need help now No matter what it is we deny self now Nobody getting let down For the most that we gotta put our best down Man, I love this brotherhood. brotherhood. On the road again, hitting up another hood. Another hood. Up north, down south, Midwest, Midwest it don't matter. We gon' bring it out. Bring it out. Bring it out. Scriptures keep ringing out. Bring it out. We gon' speak it. We gon' rap it. Even sing it out. Sing it out. Camp shirts blinging out. Blingin out. We gon' shine Blingin with these laws. What you be about? You be about. All right, shalom, brothers and sisters. I'm Brother Jacob, and to my left, Brother David. And today we're going over a, a few verses in Acts chapter 13. And while we do that, we're going to um, show you some lies of Christianity, and also um, we're going to show how they whitewashed some images and the time period. We're going to deal with that while we're... Um, in these few verses, but let's start with John chapter 8 and verse 32. This is the book of John chapter 8 and verse 32. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Right, the truth shall make you free. It's going to make you free from the shackles that's in your mind. You've been trapped in Christianity in these false doctrines. <laughs> Keeping you from your true heritage. So we're going to go to uh, the book of Acts chapter 13. And we're going to start at verse 4. Alright, so we're showing you on the map where this is taking place. It's the island of Cyprus. Go ahead, uh, read that, bro. Call it and read it. Alright, this is the book of Acts chapter 13 and verse 4. So they being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. Verse 5. And then they were at Salamis. They preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had also John to their minister. Right. So we just read that John was their minister. So now we're going to the book, The History of the Christian Church, from the birth of Christ to the 18th century, including the very interesting account of the Waldenses and Albignuses. This is page 81. It says, It appears from credible records that the gospel was preached in Idumea, Syria, Mesopotamia, by Jude, in Egypt, Mamarica, Mauritania, and other parts of Africa, by Mark, Simeon, and Jude, in Ethiopia, by the Ethiopian eunuch, and Mattathias, in Pontus, Galatia, and the neighboring parts of Asia, by Peter, in the territories of the seven Asiatic churches, by John. So I wanted to just show because John was their minister over in Cyprus. Just wanted to show in history they know this also. But let me go ahead and finish it since I'm here. In Parthia, by Matthew, in Scythia, by Philip and Andrew, in the northern and western parts of Asia, by Bartholomew, 
in Persia by Simeon and Jude in Media, Carmania, etc. by Thomas from Jerusalem and round about unto Elycrim by Paul who was published who published it in Italy and probably in Spain. So now give me a read verse 5 again. All right. This is the book of Acts, chapter 13 and verse 5. And when they were at Salamis, mm -hmm. they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. In the synagogue of the Jews. Now, what the so-called white man or the Christian would have you believe is that we're going to other people. So the reason we even we dealing with the book of Acts is because it's very important moving forward. That when you get to Paul's letters, he's not going to other people. He's going to our people that are in those areas. So watch the propaganda. Um, go ahead, verse 6. All right, verse 6. And when they had gone through the Isles of Paphos, unto, unto Paphos, uh -huh. they found a certain sorcerer, mm -hmm. a false prophet. A false prophet. A Jew. A Jew. Go ahead. Whose name was Bar Jesus. Uh huh. Come on. Which was with the deputy of the country. So he was with the deputy of the country. Go ahead. Sergius pa Paulus, mm -hmm. a prudent man, who called Barnabas and Saul. So he called for Barnabas and Saul. Why? He he's the he's the deputy of that country. So when you look on, uh, there's a map I got. They call him on that map. They call him the proconsul. So he's the deputy of that land, and he is calling for Barnabas and Saul. Why? Go ahead. And this, and desire to hear the word of God. Right. So he wanted to hear this gospel that they was preaching. If you of another nation, why do you want to hear what this gospel is that they teach? But, so we're going to show you the, uh, the lies behind this right here. So Sergius Paulus, a prudent man. So when I was looking into this, I found some lies. So let me, let me bring that out. Um, yeah, but. All right, so, um. I went to Wikipedia for Sergius Paulus. And this is what it says on Wikipedia. Can't make this stuff up. It says, Paulius was a proconsul of Cyprus under Claudius, 1st century AD. He appears in Acts chapter 13, verse 12, where in Paphos, Paul, accompanied by Barnabas and John Mark, overcame the attempts of Bar-Jesus Bar to turn the proconsul away from the faith and converted Sergius to Christianity. That's a problem. It, no. He, they didn't convert him to Christianity. This is what I mean by propaganda. These lies. If, if ever you pay attention to Christianity, you go on videos, you visit the church. One thing you're going to hear the pastor repeatedly say is the word Christian. Christian. And he came for Christians. And the faith is for Christians. The kingdom is for Christians. Heaven is for Christians. And God loves Christians. Uh, no, it don't say that nowhere. Right. Christian is only in the Bible three times. So why do you have to keep repeating it like that? It's propaganda. So it says here in Wikipedia that they converted him to Christianity. No. No. So he's, this brother's already a Jew. What he has to be taught is Christ. Right. The doctrine of Christ. <clears throat> so as I was looking into this, I un uncovered some more stuff. Um, I'm just going to keep going. I'm going to my, go to the next slide. Let's see if I can. What I can pull up. Let's 
So, yeah, so when you look in the, right, so there's a picture of Sergius Paulus. There's a painting, and the painting is by Raphael from the Raphael cartoons. I was like, hmm, that's interesting. Raphael cartoons. Okay. So, <clears throat> I pulled up Raphael cartoons and on wiki and I'm reading and it goes, the Raphael cartoons are seven large cartoons for tapestries belonging to the British Royal collection. But since 1865 on loan to the Victoria and Albert museum in London designed by the high Renaissance painter, Raphael, so let me uh, give you a little history. The High Renaissance is when, um, is after 1492. So 1492, the Jews, the black Jews are expelled from Spain. Uh, 1498, we're expelled from Portugal. Then 1499, Leonardo da Vinci is commissioned to draw the painting a white man Jesus. That's so okay. So we're gonna kick these darkies out and then we're gonna cover the images. Give me um give me uh uh give me first Maccabees three forty eight. Okay, that's what I was thinking. So like we keep saying, even when you look at the curses, the curses repeat themselves. It's just over and over. And over. All right. Yeah, go ahead and read that, bro. Right. This is the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 3 and verse 48. Mm -hmm. When laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. The book of the law is the entire Bible. It's our holy scriptures. That's the book of the law. So they took our Bibles back then. They made it illegal for us to have it. If they caught you with it, they would kill us. Mm -hmm. And then they took them and put their own images in them. Why? Mm -hmm. Trying to be the holy people. It's the same struggle from the beginning. We got the birthright, and our brother Esau is trying to get it back. But there's no repentance for him. Right. <clears throat> so these Raphael cartoons, this is the high renaissance. When they're going around changing all the images. That's what they're doing. Now, I'm going to go to um, the next one. I pulled up a, two or three of them. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, so this first image is supposed to be Christ. And... Two angels. Hmm. Okay. Uh, Revelation chapter 1, 13. This is why they, they got to pay for everything they did, man. This is... This is the book of Revelation chapter 1 and verse 13. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. Mm -hmm. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. Right. Um, the only thing I see white as snow is this man's skin right here. And the angels, too. The so-called angels. They look more like devils to me. Go ahead. His eyes were as a flame of fire. So that's another strike. I don't know what color this dude's eyes are. Go ahead. Verse 15. And his feet like unto fine brass, if they burnt in a furnace. Yeah, this dude does not look like anything at all ever burnt in a furnace on him. And his, Nothing. And his voice as the sound of many waters. And y'all know, white man Jesus is portrayed as being just soft and effeminate. You, you have to repent. <laughs> Peter, come to me. You can show them that picture. Yeah, I'm going to post it. Um, now, um, okay. then this next slide, see this, uh, Daniel 7, 
Now, before we go to Daniel 7, let's go to Ezekiel 1. Because that was the, the, we gave the description of Christ. So, let's hit them two, um, angels. I ain't going to call them things angels. They look like women in that picture. Yeah, they some Romans chapter 1. Um, <laughs> um, um, abusing themselves with mankind type of fellas. Um, verse 13. Verse 13. All right. This is the book of Ezekiel, chapter 1, and verse 13. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was, was like burning coals of fire, mm -hmm. and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures, and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning. Right, and when you go to Lamentations, I believe it said they were blacker than coal. Mm -hmm. So they, this, that's lies they pushing lies on our people now uh, can i pull verse seven real quick yeah yeah go ahead, go ahead. all right this is ezekiel chapter one and verse seven and their feet were straight feet and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot mm -hmm. and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass perfect <laughs> like brass burned in a furnace hmm not um meat left out in the snow so uh, now, uh, so this next picture is supposed to be Adam. Why the pictures look gay? Man, Genesis two and seven. We got this man Adam sitting there with his. Mm mm mm. Mm mm mm. You don't get mad at this stuff. Something wrong with you. All right, so this is the book of Genesis, chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Well, I don't know where you're going to find dust that, that look like this. I was going to say something. And, and, and another thing, they're lewd. Why you got this... Man is naked. Naked Edomite. He ain't got no mustache, no beard, no nothing. And then this is supposed to be the father, the most high, got little naked babies around. That don't make no damn sense, man. I, he, go, he gave us a law so you can't uncover nobody's nakedness. Right. Then he got a bunch of naked babies around me. So, Daniel 79. That's why white folks got to pee. Well, you're getting that. So I look, look at the bottom of it, and it says, The creation of Adam, a scene from Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel, 1508. Remember, we're conquered, 1492, 1498, uh, 1499, white Jesus is drawn. And then you got 1508 to 1512. Here comes uh, white Adam and white God. They done took you darkies, sent you back to Africa and other places, put you in slavery. And now here comes the image, their image, and their doctrine. That God love everybody. Why? Because it's Esau trying to get his birthright back. And he can't. He just can't do it. <clears throat> um, go ahead, read that, bro. This is the book of Daniel, chapter 7, and verse 9. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the Ancient of Days did sit, mm -hmm. whose garment as white as snow. So contrary to a lot of people who say that God don't have, he's a spirit and he ain't got no body, he ain't got no color and all that stuff. That's a lie. He got a body. He got a throne. He wears a garment. But don't nobody complain that he was made white with stringy hair. Right. It don't make sense. That's propaganda. Go ahead. And the hair of his head like pure wool. His, the hair of his head like pure wool. He has woolly hair. So they have put these images out here, keeping us in darkness. It's all a plan. Um, you can, yeah, you can drop that. Now I'm going to, uh, yeah, this is the last slide I'm going to put up. This is the origin of... Um, 
high renaissance. Oh, oh, I should have got this one too. So, um, the high renaissance, well, well, okay. The high renaissance started in the 1490s. So in the 1490s is when the Moors were defeated and then they were made to be slaves and had to convert to Christianity just like the Jews, which were one and the same, were the same people. Some followed um, the scriptures. Others, they followed Islam. Excuse me. So the high renaissance began in the 1490s. The painting of the Last Supper began in 1495 and concluded in 1498. I might get a picture of this too so y'all can see what's going on. So, uh, uh, Raphael and Michelangelo worked on this. So, this is, these are the lies that they perpetuated. Um, Give me... No, I'll pass on that. I've done it so many times. But 1492 is when we were defeated. It's uh, it's a well-known fact. So that's when they started um, covering the images, changing the doctrine. So when you get in the 1500s, you got, uh, what's his name, Martin Luther. Martin Luther comes along. He's the one, he makes a revelation, uh, a discovery, a revelation that um, getting the kingdom is a gift. You don't have to do no works. He delves into the letters of Paul and comes out with this doctrine. Then you got the Protestant reform and all that moving forward. They change and everything. They come, they take out the Apocrypha. And then now behold today, you got us believing that um, God is on the side of the so-called white man. No, they got their power from the dragon. All right, so now, now we're going to go back to the scripts. All right, bro, so let's read verse 7 again. Acts 13 and verse 7. All right, this is the book of Acts chapter 13 and verse 7, which was with the deputy of the country, mm -hmm. Sergius Paulus, mm -hmm. a prudent man, who called for Barnabas and Saul, and desired to hear the word of God. Right, so they drew him. We went to uh, Wikipedia. They got him portrayed as some white man meeting with these other white men. Crazy. Go ahead. But Eli, but Elamas, the sorcerer, for so is his name by interpretation, mm -hmm. withstood them, seeking to turn away the deputy from the faith. Right, so the Jews did the same thing. When they're trying to get the other brothers to repent, other Jews and our people that are called Gentiles to get them to repent and return back, they got jealous. So this dude, he's doing the same thing, trying to turn them away from the faith, playing the part of the devil. Go ahead. Verse mm -hmm. 9. Then Saul, who also is called Paul, mm -hmm. filled with the Holy Ghost, set his eyes on him. Right, so he's looking at him like you being a devil. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And, and said, O fool of all subtility and all mischief, thou child of the devil. Right, go ahead. Thou enemy of all righteousness, mm. would thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Uh -huh. Verse 11. And now behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thee, mm. and thou shalt be blind, not seeing the sun for a season. And immediately there fell on him a mist and a darkness. Oh. And he went about seeking some of the some to lead him by the hand. Man, Paul prophesied right there. God. Go ahead. Verse 12. Then the deputy, when he saw what was done, believed mm. being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Right, he believed being astonished at the doctrine of the Lord. Because all they're doing, they're going to our people, showing them, let's go to it, chapter 17 and verse 3. We keep saying that this is what they're doing. They're going to our people, convincing them 
that the Messiah has come. Go ahead, 17 and 3. This is the book of Acts, chapter 17 and verse 3. Opening and alleging that Christ must needs have suffered mm -hmm. and risen again from the dead. Mm -hmm. And that this Jesus, whom I preach unto you, is Christ. Right, that's what they're doing. This Jesus we preaching is the Christ. So this is that doctrine, that doctrine of the Lord that they're teaching. Um, now just for bonus, because that's all, we we're just going to 12. But just for bonus, just in case someone may not be convinced, go to verse 14. All right. This is the book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 14. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea. But Silas and Timotheus abode there still. Oh, I'm sorry. Back to uh, Acts 13. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> uh, Acts 13 and 10? 13 and 14. 14 and 14. All right. This is the book of Acts, chapter 13, and verse 14. But when they departed from Perga, they came to Antioch mm -hmm. and Poseidon and went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and sat down. Why? You don't. If this is not rocket science. They stay in the synagogue. Why is that? Because that's where the Jews be at. Like Christ said, I spake openly to the world in the synagogues and the temple. Right. Whether the Jews resort. Um, go ahead. Verse 15. And after the reading of the law. Uh, after the reading of the law. <laughs> go ahead. Well, I thought you didn't have to keep laws. Right. And after, it's Paul, ain't it? It's Paul, ain't it? Yep. <laughs> go ahead. Golly. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the rulers of the synagogue sent unto, unto them, saying, Ye men and brethren. Now, who is, who is Paul's brethren? Romans 9, he tells you it's the children of Israel, the Israelites. That's his brethren according to the flesh. Go ahead. If ye, excuse me, if ye have any word of exhortation for the people. So they're saying if you have any word of exhortation to uplift the people. Give, exhort them. Come on. Say on. Go Verse ahead. 16. Then Paul stood up and beckoned with his hands. Yeah, you keep saying that. Paul beckoning with his hands. He like talking with his hands. Go ahead. Say, men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. Right. Go ahead. The God of this people of Israel. The God of this people of Israel. If he's the God of the people of Israel, why would you go to other nations? Because he never dealt with them. Why would you go? You have no reason to. They don't know what you're talking about. Go ahead, finish that verse out. Chose our fathers. Chose our fathers. Come on. And exalted the people when they dwelt as strangers in the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what and, and high arm brought Heed them out of it. Right now, the book of Acts, chapter 5, and verse 29. All right. So, we just wanted to come here, show you what's going on, as usual. They only go into our people, but also to show you the craftiness of your enemy. The Bible says the people that we were sold to, those are our enemies. You know who you were sold to. All right, Acts 5 and 29. This is the book of Acts, chapter 5 and verse 29. Mm -hmm. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We ought to obey God rather than men. That's right. We ought to obey God rather than man. So, with that, and Brother Jacob, Brother to my David. left, and behind the camera, Brother Sirach, with that we say, Shalom, y'all.